everybody. Happy Friday afternoon. Sorry, it took me a little bit of time to get it together to get this devotional made. Um, usually I try to do it first thing in the morning, but this morning, as you can tell, there is no Christmas tree behind me. I took down all my Christmas decorations, got everything put away. Yay for me, got that accomplished. So now it's time to jump into our devotional. Hope you're having a great day today. And like I said, our devotional today you know, it, we, we're working on step one, and, and so the devotional goes right along with this. Um, it is in the book of Genesis today. It's the story of Sarai, Abram, and Hagar. This is before their names changed. And also, in Busted Knuckles, we are doing a Bible study based on biblical verses, and this, this study right here today the verses that we're working on, it's, it's um, chapter 16, 1 through 15. That is the first group of questions on our Bible study that we have. Now, I emailed everyone, you know, from Busted Knuckles. If, if I don't have your email, let me know, and I can email you a copy of this Bible study if you're interested. It is basically a step study based on biblical verse. It, it's really very good. It helps us dig into what's in our heads, what's driven us to different uh, different substances, different reasons to try to escape our emotions. And that causes folks to, to turn to drugs or gambling or pornography or whatever your compulsion may be. But anyway, so like I said, we are going to be in the book of Genesis, so get your Bibles out. It's, verse, or it's chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. But we are going to start with a word of prayer to our Heavenly Father. Dear Father God, we are so grateful for your word, Father God. We're grateful that throughout your Bible, there are examples for us to realize that as we live our lives, you, you give us direction, Father. You point us in the direction we need to go. And so, Father God, I pray that the words today, that your scripture today opens the eyes of those that need this, Father God. I ask for blessings across this nation. I ask for blessings and healing for those that are watching this video, those that are suffering possibly from COVID or any of, of the flus or colds that are going around, Father God. I lift them up to you, Father, in your son's name, amen. So I'm going to jump right in. Like I said, it's Genesis 1 through 15. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now she knows she is pregnant, and she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then, ha then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a stream in the desert. It was a stream. It was the spring that was beside the road to Shur. And he said to her, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I am running away from my mistress, Sarai, she muttered. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son and you shall name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. He will live in hostility towards all his brothers. So she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well has been called Bir Lahai Roy. And it is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had born. 
Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael. So you see in this a few things going on. Um, Sarai, as a custom in that time, gave her slave to her husband Abram to sleep with to conceive a child. And in that in that um, custom, you know, at that, that time, that child would become Sarai's. Well, you can see here that Sarah and Abram had a hard time believing the promise that God made to them. And I guess she felt that I'm going to help God along a little bit. And that's when she gave her, her slave to her husband. And Abram went along with it. So between the two of them, they didn't have, um, they, they didn't have, they had trouble believing in this promise that God had made to them. You know, and unfortunately, when we have this, this lack of faith, there's consequences to this, you know, and, and then if you notice it, even though Hagar is the one that made this arrangement, after it was all said and done, she blamed Abram for it. This blame game goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. They blamed each other, you know, they blamed, Adam blamed God for giving him Eve, and Eve blamed the, the snake, and the blame game is not a new game, all right? And, you know, and so because of all of this, Sarai was hurt, confused, I'm sure, anxious about what was happening. And so she took this out in anger against Hagar, and that caused Hagar to run away, you know. So in this, we've watched three people make serious mistakes. Number one, Sarai, who took matters into her own hands and gave her servant to Abram. The second one is Abram, who went along with the plan, but when circumstances began to go wrong, he refused to help with the problem. He told Sarai, do what you think is right. Do whatever you want, you know. And then the third one, of course, was Hagar, who ran away from the problem. So in spite of all this whole messy situation, God showed his ability to work in all things for the good of these people. If you look in Romans 8, 28, it tells it right there, God works his good in our lives. So Sarai and Abram still received the son they so desperately wanted, and God solved Hagar's problem despite Abram's refusal to get involved. So no problem is too complicated for God if you're willing to let him help you. Amen? If we're willing to let him help us through these things, then he will. So we're going to take a look at our Life Recovery Devotional. It is called a no-win situation. And remember, step one, step one is all about we admitted that we were powerless over our dependencies and our lives had become unmanageable. So I'm sure that Miss Hagar was feeling that, that feeling of powerlessness. Amen. And even Sarai, powerless over the whole situation that she unfortunately created. And Abram in denial of the whole thing. So Lots of powerlessness going on when you try to take things into your own hands. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's read this devotional. Sometimes we are powerless because of our station in life. We may be in a situation where other people have power over our lives. We may feel that we're trapped by the demands of others and that there's no way to please them all. It's a double bind. To please one is to disappoint the other. Sometimes when we feel stuck and frustrated with our relationships, we look for a measure of control by escaping through our addictive behaviors. Hagar is the picture of powerlessness. She had no rights. She was a servant. As a girl, she was a slave to Sarai and Abram. And when they were upset because Sarah could bear no children, she was given to Abram as a surrogate. She didn't have any say in any of this. When she did become pregnant, as they wanted, Sarai was so jealous that she beat the girl and she ran away. All alone out in the wilderness, she was met by an angel who, to who told her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. I will give you more descendants than you can count. You are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. And again, that's in Genesis 16, and it's 1 through 15. When we're caught in a no-win situation, it's tempting to run away through our addictions or our compulsive escape hatches. 
at times like these, God is there and he is listening to your woes. We need to learn to express our pain to God instead of just trying to escape. He hears our woes and is willing to give us hope for the future. So it's wise to turn and face our problems, accepting God's promise for help. Amen. So we have to, we have to admit our powerlessness. So let me read just what it says real quick in the study Bible. When Hagar could not help herself and recognize and recognized her powerlessness over her situation, the angel of the Lord came and ministered to her. Until we recognize that our situation is hopeless without outside help, God waits and does not help us. He he doesn't want us to be like robots. We all have choices. He gives us options. And he's waiting for us to make that choice to ask him for help. Amen. So until we, re until we recognize this, he's going to wait and does not help us. But when we're ready to admit our need and to cry out to him, he's ready to step in. Thank goodness for that. So recognize your need. For outside help and that outside help should come from God himself. Amen. So again, I'm, if you want to work on this Bible study, step one, um, either send me a message, you know, on, on Facebook here. If you have my number, give me a text, give me a call, let me know. I can either email you a, an attachment with the document or I, I carry some with me at church if I see a church. Let me know. I could drop one in the mail for you. It's very good. Just an example. Like I said, this the first group of, of questions are based on this devotional that we just did. And it says, what feelings do I experience as I acknowledge people in my life who have power, such as supervisors, spouses, church leadership, sponsors, or road dogs? It's asking you questions that you answer truthfully about yourself. What do I try to escape from? What do I feel trapped by? How do I escape my feelings, such as anger, boredom, fatigue, or loneliness? And there's, and there's more. There's a group of five questions regarding that particular Bible verse. So as you, if you notice, the, the verse is about Hagar and her poor helplessness. The questions are regarding your helplessness and how and what you've done to deal with that. Okay, because that's what these steps are all about. We're digging into us and finding out what drove us to these different habits, compulsions, addictions, whatever you want to call them. All right. So if you're interested, let me know. Okay. Okay. Hey, you guys have a great day today. If you're in town Friday night, this, this is the second Friday of the month. There's women's and men Bible study at Roadhouse Biker Church. Starts at 7 o'clock. Always a great dinner is served. And then we sit down and we get into the word. Amen. This is a great day. So enjoy this beautiful day. I'm looking out my front door and the sun is shining. It's probably 70, I don't know, 73 degrees out there. It's nice. It's nice. So God bless everybody.